Thank you so much, Master Ceremonies, fellow Toastmasters, guests, and my young friend sitting there who I'm sure will be able to guide us better about what I'm going to speak in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, speaking, they say, is an art. Quite hotly debated about the fact, whereas the rest of the school say, no, it's a science. Let me ask you a question. Have you all heard about the names that I will throw to you now? In Indian mythology, somebody called Dronacharya and Chanakya. And more recently, for those who follow cricket, Ramakant Achurekar, and for the rest of the European clan, Alex, Sir Alex Ferguson. What do they all have in common? They've left behind a legacy of people who followed what they taught. Guide, mentor, coach, lighthouse. You can have many synonyms for describing this person who stands up and says, look, do this, but don't do that. This piece, ladies and gentlemen, is harboring about the fact that we all come across a situation in life when we need to talk to someone and help in him taking a course, chartering a path where he can improve many notches up. And therein, all of us play an important role. It's not always easy. And for the person who at that stage might not be chronologically young, but yes, experience-wise is a little lower down than the person who is trying to become his coach at that point of time, things might not be looking so rosy and acceptable. How you handle that, how you overcome the differences, how you reconcile the thought processes between one stage up and one stage low and get it all together is the purpose, the sole purpose of this act that we shall put up between me and my co-partner on stage who shall be a role player. You might also ask me that what are the reasons for this difference in the game? Well, let's explain one thing to you. For everybody who's had some difference ever, you would understand that these differences generally arise from either a problem with adequate training or inadequate resources or that of time. And lastly, and sometimes most importantly with that of motivation. So let me explain to you. Take any scenario. Take the scenario of a young son going to school. My son now, going to a school which I used to hate from the bottom of my pit when I was going to school, an adversary school of mine, but quite adored by a good number of people sitting here, and I shall refrain for political purposes to name the school. <laughs> My son going to class one now throws a tantrum every morning and saying, Dad, by what time does the school end? I keep telling him that every day it's only a three hour turmoil. And every day he keeps asking me in some different manner, when will it end? One day I asked him, I was dropping him to school, I asked him, what is your problem? He just looked at me and said, the teacher. Well, that is true for all of us who go to class one. Somebody had to counsel him in either a psychiatric manner or go into the delving of the NLP and find out how else could he have been counseled. That he is only five and a half years old. So I told him, look, what does the teacher do? Guides. What does dad do? Shouts, guides. So there's a similarity. And what do you do when you do things well? That also takes you out and then there is a timber too and there is a pot of, for him it's a big pot, of popcorn. So things happen. Similarly, do what is asked of you in class and the teacher should reward you. You have to go down to his level to explain to him what he could have understood. You may try to coach him in saying overcome fear in exactly the similar manner. I shall bring forward a situation of Toastmasters. For the guests, Toastmasters is not about communication only. It's about interacting 
between one end and another and getting messages across which can actually be comprehended and replied to. And for that, sometimes we use our own words. Some other times we make grammatical errors. And some other times we are very tongue-tied. Overall, in Toastmasters, we promote the fact that you have a friend called a mentor. And that's exactly what me and my partner today will talk about. Trust me, my partner is an excellent human being and a great speaker. His difference of expression today will only be part of his role play. So if he does it well, you know he's up for the next Oscar. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up on stage next is a person who I shall interact with for a short duration of time as a role presentation to see how coaching can help, what all we need to know, and how we take things forward. Up on stage next, ladies and gentlemen, let's wait for him big time. Toastmaster Ashok Gupta. Hi, Mr. Gupta. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Oh, it's been a long day. Let me get you a chair first. Let's sit down and have a little discussion because I was wanting to talk to you for a long time. Have a seat. Yes, sir. So what? Mr. Gupta. Yes, sir. You are a great Toastmaster. You know what I like about you? That call which you make to people and say, when are you delivering your next speech? Very interesting for all of us. And that actually motivates me to deliver a lot of speeches. Yes. Mr. Gupta, I am seeing a few things which I feel can be improved. One of them I am seeing is certain grammatical mistakes which happen when you give speeches or when you come up or do a role play there. Why do you think, Mr. Gupta, is this coming up so often? You have been a close for a long time. I really agree with you. You are my mentor. So I'm very keen to improve my communication. You have to suggest me how to improve Absolutely. because you are my boss. That's the reason why I like your enthusiasm. That's the reason why I like your enthusiasm. That's really why I like your enthusiasm. Shukta, is it because of lack of words in your memory that you sometimes forget? Maybe, sir, I can't say so. Sometimes I uh, really I ask my trainer. Because they are better, true, better communicator than me. I ask them, maybe I'm wrong somewhere, Can you tell me. So I that that could be one, right? Yes. A lack of words. Right. Second, what do you think is one of the most important factors when you go up on stage and look at people looking back at you? Is this some kind of a stage fright? I don't think so. That is, that is I don't think so about that thing. Yeah, I, I quite agree because you're a strong man. <laughs> Give me five on that. But trust me, fear is not your forte. So I don't think it is fear. Then, one, I sincerely think are the lack of words. Second, do you think it is also because we do not speak the language, the Queen's language, so much in our residences? It's more of our mother tongue. Yeah, I think so. But maybe sometimes lack of practice, I think. Still, that you have to practice. Definitely. Okay, let, let's. let's Let's get into the first part of it in saying lack of words. Mr. Gupta, I would suggest two very important things. First, make it a practice to read the English newspaper every day. All of us have a habit of getting newspapers. I got a big old newspaper in my house every day. Vernacular is good as long as inside those feelings which help you get through the morning evolution. Some of us cannot actually live without a newspaper in closed room. You know which one I'm talking about in the early morning. <laughs> That's excellent. That's really good stuff. I think, Mr. Gupta, next is to pick up a red in marble. That's the mother of all grammatical books. And what I suggest to you is go and surf out some words. Say four words every day. Find them out. See what they actually mean. Find out the meaning of those words. And try to use those four words in the next Friday meeting. So in the next Toastmasters meeting, your focus is not only on the word of the day, but also on the four words which you've gathered from the Ren and Martin that week. It's a slow process. But you remember the, the age-old Aesop fable about the tortoise and the hare? It's not always the hare which wins the race. So I am very confident that you will really do well. So start by taking up four words, putting them in your lexicon, and taking it a step higher in saying, okay, this Friday, my job is to deliver those four words 
in sentences which I will make. Do you think that can be done? And you can certainly do this. Great. So that's one. Second, Mr. Gupta, my suggestion is that let's meet up more often and let's talk as much as possible in English. Because by practicing, you overcome not only the mistakes, but the fear of public speaking itself. So my suggestion is, like people learn how to cry, you learn how to speak by banging the car, and similarly by banging your tongue a couple of times. You make mistakes, I don't mind. But I'm going to be a proud, proud mentor because when you come up and perform on stage, then you make no mistakes. That's going to be our goal from here. You think that's a possibility which you could look at? Yes, of course. I will take care of you. Perfect. Perfect. Is there anything which you have in mind which I can really come up with and help you? and it should be the one area that I should focus on to see you improve.
Can I take that question? Yep. Four days of work was a bang on idea. That is the best way you can or a person to improve on his grammar and learn new words. Four words a day was a very good idea. Thank you, Pallavi. I took that idea when I see, I'm, I'm learning a lot from the people all around me. Some expert Toastmasters sitting in the room and I'll just come back to you, ma'am, in a minute. And also my younger son, who's just about learning how to dull food. The too much of food which is like fed into him is disastrous. You give it to him in small morsels and he quite enjoys and relishes it. So that's an idea which I take and it's very bad. Yes, ma'am. Thank <laughs> you. 